Good morning, afternoon, even. What a whopper. Two days in a row, it says exactly the same thing twice. <laughs> it's not the morning, Graham Day. It is actually the afternoon. But anyway, good afternoon and welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. My name is Graham Day and this man in, is that a Rocky Balboa? Uh, you know what? So many people say that. It, like, it, 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 must, it must just be like a carbon copy of it or is whatever. It a just with, or a stout yeah, with a bat, with a Batman. Oh, I'm not even wearing my Batman hat. Honestly, fuck this right up. You've let I it mean, all down. You say you saying that it's the evening. Uh, you saying that it's the morning, and me wearing not matching things. Do you know? What? I great think stuff. we should just end the show now. So thanks for tuning <laughs> in, guys. Have a great day. See you later. Bye bye. Uh, yeah. So. Oh, let me just mute Slack because he keeps singing away in my ears. I've just pressed mute. Why are you not muting? Pause notifications. But I get out of here. Anyway, anyway, uh, my name is Graham, and this man in the Rocky Bat Boa, see what I did there, uh, dressing nice gown, is the man that we call Bibinho, aka Bib, aka the Big Bed, Bib, 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 Bob, Bib, Bob, Bib, Bob, Bib, Bob, Bib, Anonymous, Bib Boss Man, that's his name. Uh, Rocky Bib Boa. <laughs> <laughs> says Craig Jesus in the chat. Nice work. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. Anyway, we together combined are well a section of the channel that we call Ice Cream. You can see it's it's, it's you know the name's just there, just 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 there, just just below baby's face. We are Ice Cream. This is the scoop, and we bring you your daily dose of news from the video games industry, and we give you our thoughts and impressions on all the biggest, best, and breaking stories, and we want your thoughts and impressions too. If you are live on Twitch. The chat is just down the side of the screen here. Feel free to get involved. Drop your comments in, just like Craig did with Rocky Biboa just then. Feel free to get involved. We want your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions, and that's how this works. It's a collaboration. And that's important because we turn this into a video podcast that goes on YouTube just a little bit later on the sh uh, in the show, in the day after this show goes offline. And then we turn that video podcast into an audio podcast that goes on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Google Play. So if you are in the chat, feel free free to get involved those guys get the on-demand functions but they don't get to speak directly to bibi which you know people queue up to do i mean he's studying morrison's trying to get himself some like some cheesy popper things and these people going oh is that bibi from ice cream uploads i'm like stand back <laughs> social distancing and stuff and that was before all this kicked off you know you know just try to keep them away anyway so feel free to get involved in the chat if you are watching on youtube then feel free to get involved using the comments uh we did have a comment yesterday uh, relating to the Destiny 2 Division. news. Uh, Division. Division, Division, that's the one. Yes, not Destiny. You're trying to piss them off again. Oh, God, they're not all going. They've already just joined us. Uh, but yes, feel free to get involved. And if you are watching on YouTube, please feel free to hit the like button. We are producing content each and every single weekday on YouTube. And it's it's showing the numbers of subs and the numbers of likes. And the numbers of views on our content is going up all the time. You hitting like makes sure that more people see that. And that means that, you know, we get a little bit more impetus and potentially one day financial incentive from YouTube to make more content for you. So feel free to hit like if you like what you see. You don't have to if you don't like it. Just don't hit the dislike button because that literally every time someone hits dislike, uh, Bibi just has to go and sit in the corner for a couple of minutes. So actually, fuck, everyone's going to press it now. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if, if you are hitting dislike, then that's cool. At least you're interacting with us. It still means that we're going to start ranking are you. So nice one, guys. No worries. Yeah, just press them all. Do all the things. Yeah. Do all the things. Uh, anyway, what have you done in the last 24 hours or so, babe? Uh, I started watching Avenger, uh, Avengers Endgame on Disney+, Plus because I've never seen it before. Um, I watched... What was the one before that? The Avengers film before that? Can't remember. Infinity War. Uh, Infinity War, yeah, where they, all, where they all start to perish at the end of it. And then there was two more films after that, which I didn't bother watching because as soon as I started perishing, I was like, I know what's going to happen in the last one. I don't need to watch that shit. Um, as a DC guy, yes, I am a DC fanboy. I much prefer the DC stuff, you even though the films are absolutely shy. I was going to say, you prefer the DC films. My yeah, God. well, mate, I'm, I'm DC OG IE. I love the Adam West Batmans, and I also love the Tim Burton Batmans in the 90s. They was the best... The best projection of uh, comic books on TV uh, and in the big screen. Your DC OG IE. D yeah. Dukogi? <laughs> Dukogi! Uh, morning, Phantom. Uh, or it's, and the reason Bib says morning is because that absolutely does apply. Oh, fuck me, yeah. When it, when it comes to us, we usually. It is morning to him. <laughs> well, it's, I don't think. If he's still awake now, I don't think he knows what time it is right now. So Phantom is like. Is it eight hours behind, six hours behind, mm -hmm. or something like that? Uh, hashtag Team No Sleep. And usually when we're streaming at 10 a.m., Phantom drops in the chat, and it's like 
at 2 a.m. or something like that, 4 a.m. or whatever. So that means it's got to be like morning for you, literally. But like morning, morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, good morning, uh, as as you can tell from the uh, the red eyes. Uh, uh, oh, don't need you, don't need you. The red eyed emote in the chat. How is life, Phantom? Do you even know where you are? You, I mean, I mean, most of us don't know what day it is anyway right now. But, yeah. but do you have any idea? That's that's the that's the question. That's the question. Uh, uh, I also yes ended up playing Resident Evil Resistance yesterday as well with Barry and Weza. Uh I was I was kind of excited for this game anyway before I knew that the Resident Evil Three thing was going to happen. Obviously, roll back to PlayStation. Uh, what was the Jesus Christ? What was it called? State of Play, uh, where they announced it. Uh, it's good. However, I can see the flaws in it already. You have a games master, and you also have. Oh, geez, my throat is burning. I don't know what it is. I've not. I've just had a, a bit of my tea there. It's not hot, but my throat's doing that burny feeling. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't know why, but it's it's hurting at the moment. But uh, yeah, it's um. So you have a games master, and then you have five minutes to get from one side of uh, the map to the exit. Um, but every time you kill a zombie, the time goes up. If you end up uh, de- getting downed, the time goes down. If you hit something that you shouldn't have done, or you shoot something that you shouldn't have done, the time will also go down as well. So we was actually doing really well last night. However, when the games master thinks that they're going to lose, they just back out, and the game dies. Like... <laughs> It doesn't. You don't get the instant win when they start to back out. The game just dies, and it, you, you start to become MIA. And then when you go MIA, the game just ends, and then you get a ranking at the end of it. And that is a massive flaw so far in the game. It was pissing us right off. So who's the game's master then? Like, is that you just get randomly assigned? So you'll have there's five people in each match. One person's the game's master, and then the other four are the survivalists. So you need to be able to try and get out. So the game's master will have. Uh, it'll be looking at um, like 50 monitors or whatever for each room and the camera it shows like from a cctv perspective so they'll be putting traps on the floor and spawning zombies spawning dogs and stuff like that but you'll have puzzles to solve in the meantime so you'll have to find like three pieces of the world map put it on the wall and then the door will open so you're doing stuff like that whilst the games master's trying to stop you from getting to the next place so we kept some clearing area one. Area one was dead easy. Area two we struggled with for quite a bit until we didn't. And then we moved into area three, which is the furthest that we got. And then as soon as we got halfway through area three, the games master left. And then that was it. And I was like, fuck this. I can't be asked going through that again. That sounds like an absolute rage fest. I mean, if it, if it was a games master in your party, then yeah, fair enough. But if you're jumping into a game with four other people, um, and you're playing that online, and one of them just goes, "Oh fuck it, my tea's ready," and drops out, and you're like, mm-hmm. "You're on the fourth area or whatever like that." I'd be like, "Yeah." So you do still get coins, and you still do get a rank, but you don't get the opportunity to finish it, which is obviously where more points have come in. But if it's a DC from the games master standpoint, then surely you should get the automatic win. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I mean, as the game stands, if they sort that out. And they sort out the connection because it was so laggy last night. I don't know whether the games master is the host of the game. So if if it's their connection that's laggy, I hope it's that is just the case. So where if, it's just their connection and then you're playing off of their connection. So the games master, uh is that someone you're playing against? Oh. Yeah, so he's the baddie yeah. and you 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 follow the goodies in the in the the, the very top down sense that they have one bad guy, four good guys, you need to get you need to exit wherever it is that you are exit the building but there'll be like five or six stages to be able to clear it or whatever but we never actually got that far so i couldn't tell you how far you'd have to go um but each mission was like i don't know each playthrough was between five minutes and 15 minutes i think 15 minutes was the furthest that we got uh, so we could have gone on for a little bit longer but you can play it as many times as you want it just takes one forever to find a game and two if you get a laggy games master it appears that your game just turns to shit gg <laughs> Well, you've added that to mind. Not yeah. bothering touching that <laughs> one list. If there's five five of your mates that are playing, it'll be such a good laugh because I think if you go into the, I was saying this last night. I don't. What they need to implement is you can put instead of using your party chat, you'd use the game chat. Then the then the the games master would then not be able to hear the rest of the guys in the party chat. So the other other four guys will be able to talk to each other and find a way out, and then the games master can't hear them. 
But then at the end, they all jump back into the game chat again, so there's five of them. That would be good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the CCTV cam view reminds me of the first Resi film with the Red Queen watching. Yep. You're all going to die in the hive. Down here. I fucking love that. You're all going to die down here. Just said that. Copy my phone. Mate. Just said it. Literally. Just, just right. said it, mate. Just, really? just, honestly, honestly, shut out. Anyway, anyway, uh, let's jump into some news. Uh, we have a few stories for you today, including something uh, a little bit meaty. And uh, it's interesting to see this picture. This first time I've properly looked at the article. And uh, I, I can see a stage that I was sat in front of last year. Uh, yeah. So the first article today is written by Game Central for Metro, and this article says Bethesda cancels digital showcase in June, and it will not have an E3 equivalent. So uh, E3 is already cancelled, but it seems some publishers won't even have an online-only alternative as Bethesda struggles with the coronavirus. The cancellation of E3 last month forced publishers to tear up all their plans for revealing new games, and in Microsoft's case, consoles, uh, this year, uh, but many of them quickly promised that they'd figure out some kind of online alternative. Bethesda, though, has admitted that they won't be able to do that, and frontman Pete Hines has said that due to many challenges relating to the coronavirus pandemic, they will not host any kind of event in June. He wasn't any more specific than that, and so it's not clear exactly what the problem is, but it's probably a combination of upcoming projects not being far enough along in general, and the more specific problem of getting demos and trailers ready in time for June. And then there's an embedded tweet there from Pete Hines that says, Given the many challenges we're facing due to the pandemic, we will not host a digital showcase in June. We will have lots of exciting things to share about our games and look forward to telling you more in the coming months. Uh, now that Doom Eternal is out, uh, Bethesda is in a similar position to Nintendo in that it has a number of prominent titles announced, but none of them are thought to be anywhere near close to being finished. Bethesda has previously uh, warned that both Starfield and The Elder Scrolls VI are many years off yet, whilst Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop are thought to be more imminent, they're probably still not this year. Hines does leave open the possibility of a showcase later in the year, perhaps something to coincide with Gamescom in August, in whatever form that takes. Uh, the European equivalent of E3 hasn't been cancelled yet, but it's looking increasingly doubtful whether it'll be a physical event. It now remains to be seen what other publishers will do with Microsoft, Ubisoft and indie publisher Devolver Digital currently being the only ones to commit to a digital event in June. Nintendo has implied that they'll do a Nintendo Direct at the usual time, although recent reports suggest they've had to shelve plans to have a major Super Mario Bros. 35th anniversary event. Biberito, thoughts? Uh, it's probably the right move from them. Um, when oh, we get Doom is now out, as I mentioned in the in the article, and that was the biggest thing on their list as of now. Um, so it would be a waste of a conference, and it probably would have soured a few fans, shall we say, if there was just to have a conference and not announce anything big. So it's probably the right thing to do. Um, with E3 not being there and them not having uh, an online thing, it just saves disappointment from both sides, really. Um, they wouldn't have been able, like you said also in the article, that they would have never been able to put trailers and demos together to be able to show off two people. So what is it that they would have done the press conference for? It, not, it, it, there wouldn't have been much, but it also, it also gives a hint of what was they going to do in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the thing... The thing is, Bethesda almost definitely would have been at E3. Let's say this was just standard year and there was no pandemic. Uh, Bethesda would have been at E3. We would have had another hashtag BE3 um, conference. Excuse me. Um, and yeah, they'd probably have announcements for the Doom DLC, um, which is no doubt going to be coming. Um, they'll probably have announcements for... Or, Community thanks for how the Wasteland seventy six uh, Wastelanders Fallout seventy six update has um, been re received. Obviously, I mean that's if it goes down well. Obviously, that update is due to come out in twelve days time. We covered that I mm -hmm. think at the start of the week or at the, start, at the end of last week. Um, it's a fourteen for it. comes out now. Yeah. So Fallout seventy six Wastelanders update has been delayed. It should have come out on the seventh. It's now coming out on the fourteenth. It was delayed for an extra seven days so they can finish it off uh doing their final quality control checks um so yeah that potentially would have been included plus all of the other bits that they mentioned in there like death loop and, and and so on um but yeah i think that i think that shows you how um how much of an impact 
uh, the pandemic and, and not so much the pandemic in terms of people being sick uh, and dying, obviously. Um, I think it show, it's showing an impact that the the change in working conditions can have um, on an industry. So, so let's say you have a team of not necessarily developers, but but video editors that 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 share a central resource to access the media files that have been cut and uh, created by the maybe someone in the development team. Put them into a central source uh, that all of the the art team then can sit around and say, okay, we, we're going to artwork this into a. a, a three minute trailer that's going to be shared at, at the conference and so on and then there's obviously the approval processes of sharing that with uh, leaders of the development teams or leaders within the Bethesda uh, like global teams whatever however it works let's say it's uh, it's uh, uh, it being the developers of Doom wanted to create a trailer for Doom their teams would probably have to work it and get it seen by uh, global Bethesda teams and so on the the logistics of that now now that everyone's not in one central office, not pulling artwork from central servers, um, probably just means that everything is longer, everything will take a much more drawn out process. So while things probably are moving forward, I imagine that that's probably part of it. So the, um, mm. where, where was their actual wording was, uh, uh, I can't find a bit where they talked about the trailers and stuff, but yeah, I imagine that's it. The, they will have had plans of things to do, but all of those assets require teams, require scripts, require sit-down meetings where people can discon uh, discuss content, people to put things together, people to work together, um, and all of that smooth process that they probably uh, engineered over years of doing this is just being disrupted to the point that, yes, it's still a few months away, but but there's there's a lot of there's a lot of uncertainties and things that are happening that will slow that down mm. potentially indefinitely for them. They could usually go, okay, well we've got three months or not even three two months now june will be in a couple of months two months we've got two months and we will have our june showcase um we know that the trailer will take this long and then we've got this trailer which will this and this one is this uh they can't plan that yeah i mean something that they know should take a week might now take two weeks might take three weeks but i think the key thing is they won't know how long it's going to take so they can't really plan yeah. for it but the, the i'd still love to know what it was that they was going to be announcing at e3 though like they surely they would have had bits of trailers that they would have on, uh, the uh, 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 Jesus Christ, <laughs> they would have had trailers knocking about somewhere that they would have been showing off at this event. Yeah, well, what they... were they? Like, even if it was just going to be uh, a ten-minute live stream or a state of play slash Nintendo Direct style of thing, where they go, this is what we've got to look forward to this year. This is what uh, the Wastelanders has come out. Like you said, thank you very much for playing it. The the reception has been better than the last ones. We'll continue to work on this. We'll see you in a few months with a brand new update. That kind of thing. So, what is on the cutting room floor from this that they're not showing off now? Well, we, was it just going to show like another thirty seconds of that Elder Scrolls trailer, which was like ten seconds long, where it's just a load of hills and then the Elder Scrolls come to the front of the screen? I would. Was it just going to be more of that stuff? I mean, how long was the conference when you went to it last year? Well, that was a full E3 conference, so that was about an hour. Um, I imagine, I mean, the thing you've got there is when it came to Ghostwire Tokyo, they had, obviously, uh, members of the development team, and I can't remember the name of the woman that was on stage. But then, the, anyway, they had, they had, for each game, had roughly five to ten minutes-ish each. Um, mm -hmm. And then they had their little bit in the limelight and then there was some mobile content and uh, all the rest too. Um, so they kind of like uh, the Nintendo Directs or what's what, what the PlayStation one's called? PlayStation State of Play. State of Play, that's the one. So kind of like State of Play or Nintendo Direct, you, you get a trailer and then a little bit of a spiel around it and then it moves on to the next thing. And, and that's yeah. essentially, obviously, like how all the conferences work. So um, you'd get a big chunk of time on the new... Uh, so last year's, for example, there was a huge bit on Fallout 76 and the shortcomings and it's not done very well and they want to acknowledge that and they want to thank the community for the patience and they want to make it right, which is what Fallout 76 Wastelanders will do in the summer. Obviously, then that got delayed from the summer, uh, not the summer, from, from uh, the autumn. That's obviously been delayed until now, um, well, 12 days time. 
Uh, but that they spent a long time showing the trailers of what Fallout 76 should do, plus some of the other updates that will be coming in the, in the meantime before Wastelanders. So yeah, we we probably wouldn't had uh, wouldn't have had all of that. But um, <clears throat> yeah, there's quite a lot in it though. I mean, even before we get to the the trailers side of things, let's use your um, Elder Scrolls kind of thing. Imagine I imagine that they would have gone okay we've had a 10 second trailer whatever it is now we do so that's kind of the teaser we, we do need like a, a reveal trailer um but to have a reveal you you either go for a, sh a like a, a a teaser reveal so you more than a teaser but you're not giving everything you have something short and sharp that wets the whistle for something that's that you're going to follow up pretty soon afterwards or you have your your three to five minute trailer with it with the developer segment or you get keanu reeves walking out and saying no you're breathtaking kind of thing you have like those sort of moments obviously it's already been revealed by there but um yeah the thing there though is is obviously you need you need the video teams to be able to put the assets together but before that you need the development teams as well so if you got if you're earlier on in the development you need you you might not even have workable assets you might need to create assets for the purposes of okay these need mm -hmm. to be prioritized because these are going to be using the trailers and so on so that they need to be developed by the uh, uh the development teams and the art workers within the development team before you get to the art workers within the uh, marketing teams that are going to turn them into sexy trailers and stuff so all of those being not sat at their fully kitted out station and probably working from a, a breakfast bar in their kitchens or whatever whilst uh and and to uh Reference a member of the ice cream team uh, working away while standing in fresh dog shit. Uh, shout to uh, Buzz Dead Peep, aka Jamie Hughes, who's done that <laughs> this morning. Uh, he has actually uh, stood in fresh turd this morning and then walked it across his carpet because that's the way he rolls. <laughs> uh, and then to further compound his misery, he then opened up a packet of quavers which had four and a half quavers in it. I would have <laughs> raged. <laughs> I mean, the poop, yeah. the poop. Yeah, probably. That's probably end the day when you, if you stand in fresh turd end the day but to have four and a half skips that's that's even worse see it's not i mean it's not it is a bag of air anyway but <laughs> what do you expect there's no substance in anything that walkers do unfortunately uh yeah i mean when they, when they used to make the steak and onion crisps uh beef and onion crisps as, as opposed to steak and onion or whatever they are now yeah game changer but when they changed that recipe and that pff, get out of here just get out just leave get out of here mm. But um, yeah, I mean Bethesda. Let's like looking back at the article. Bethesda has previously warned that both Starfield and the Elder Scrolls Six are many years off yet. And while Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop are thought to be more imminent, they're probably still not this year. I think we'd have still had an update from all of them. So even though they're yeah. not here, you will have had a. Oh, we can now show you obviously a bit more of Elder Scrolls. We can uh, take. I can't remember too much about Deathloop other than it looked cool. I seem to in my mind I've got some sort of like almost like co op experience but i can't remember now and i'm not, not going to click through it now but even still we had a bit of there you probably get some gameplay hands-on sessions or you get announcements of uh um special editions and the released cycles and and dlc plans or or things like that would have had i imagine that or some sort of exclusivity or pre-order deals and, and and things um but yeah clearly uh they've been impacted enough or let's play devil's advocate maybe they haven't been impacted enough maybe they've just said okay well june is the big day in the calendar because e3 is there um e3 isn't very good in terms of number of levels well first one it's not happening that's not that that it's not good for that clearly that is a good reason it's not happening because it would just be uh contagion city people infecting people left right and center so that's not happening that's fine but okay it's not happening but it was already in poor favor the esa for many reasons which we've spoken about previously um haven't set themselves in a good light leading up to this jeff Keeley and co have left them and gone to gamescom which is in august which is two months later uh well nearly three months because you've got all of june all of july and gamescom's at the end of august not the start of june so you've got two and a half nearly three months later mm. in the the um projected growth is growth the right word projected cycle of uh, the coronavirus pandemic it could be gone by then it could be not i mean a lot of people would think either way i don't i don't know i'm not a medical guy but let's just say it's 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 more likely that um you'll be able to go to events in august than june 
so they probably they could be thinking, okay, well let's shift our focus to Gamescom then. Um, yeah. Uh, and the key thing there as well is, like, it's two months till E3, and it's obviously been cancelled. But anything that's happening from the ESA around that didn't. Uh, I believe they said that they, they were looking at alternatives they were looking at uh, obviously a number of companies like devolver um i think it was mentioned in here uh yeah devolver microsoft and ubisoft have all said that it will do digital versions so they've said that themselves but the esa in their e3 announcement also said that they were investigating ways that they could provide a digital version of e3 this year it's only two months now. It's been the best part of a month since it was it was shelved, and we haven't heard anything on how that's going to uh, work yet. But Gamescom, on the other hand, uh, I've already confirmed that opening night live um, is still going to go ahead. As will they're already looking at uh, bits around that in terms of if if the show isn't happening, they're already starting to build out a contingency plan of how they can get the content out. So maybe it's even things like that. Maybe Gamescom have just got the publishers thinking, okay, well, people like Gamescom. Um, Gamescom hasn't leaked anyone's details before, and Gamescom is at what will most likely be a safer time, and they've already started planning for it. So could it just be a case of Bethesda have gone, okay, well, we would have been stretched right now, um, but going in August isn't that much of a difference for us because we've probably not mm. got things launching in this year so just moving to the Gamescom window is a bit more attractive for us that could be a, a big thing as well mm. interested to see what they come out with then because I, I think that's I think that probably is a very good point actually about them potentially thinking E3 will get canned anyway so let's just focus our attention on potentially going to uh, Gamescom and then see what we call, what happens around that time I, I am expecting to see something um, something big. I don't. I don't. They need to. There needs to be in each conference that you that you have, especially the likes of Bethesda, when you've got so many good IPs. They need to show something big. So uh, a nice little thirty-second package of uh, the new Elder Scrolls game would be fantastic. I mean, we got. We ha- I think there was two trailers for. I think it was elsewhere that was coming out last year. Um, was when that was that Gamescom with, with the cat thing? Yeah. 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 Uh, so I I seen that one on um, on on loop pretty much where at the Bethesda stand at Gamescom, and it, it literally uh, did see it on loop. He was like, ah, ah, he just stood there like tongue out, drool dripping <laughs> off his face. Uh, yeah, so uh, seeing something, I mean, we're inevitably going to see something Elder Scrolls Online, um, but we want to see the main the main title games. I want to see what what they've got to offer offer us. Uh, inevitably there's going to be more Fallout 76 talk um, whether or not it'd be about the Wastelander stuff or what's going to be happening in the future so yeah um, we need to see something big from Bethesda and if they have to take the time in doing it and want to aim for Gamescom then that's that's that should be, that should be fine by everybody because we don't want them to mess up like they have done so far with the Fallout 76 stuff yeah exactly exactly anyway let's uh, move forward and uh, do you know what some people kind of like Bethesda have done uh, mess up pretty often. This is the, the tedious link. Just bear with me. Um, you know, you could be you could be in a Twitch chat and you could mess up. Oh, do you, do you not mess up? You could just be a blatant twat. Let's put it that way. People on the internet, particularly online, when it comes to content creation uh, mechanisms, can be pricks. We see it on our uh, YouTube channels. We see it on uh, Twitch channels. We see it on Twitter, wherever. Um, but Twitch have taken a stance against that, which is lovely because that's where we're streaming right now. Yay! Anyway, Twitch, as uh, you can see in the article that's on screen now, written by Nathan Grayson for Kataka UK. Twitch has just made it harder to be a jerk in chat. Uh, Read through the article and it says, A good Twitch chat is like a serene sea. Always welcome, but all too rare a respite from the choppier waters of the internet. Over the years, Twitch has given chat moderators tools to lock out ugliness spewing ne'er-do-wells, but a number of loopholes have allowed dedicated trolls to slip back under the gates with relative ease. New changes, however, may finally send pernicious chatters packing. First and foremost... If a viewer gets banned from chat, they're not just blocked from making comments anymore. Now they can no longer see chat at all. Uh, They also no longer appear in followers or chat lists, meaning they can't continue to quietly make their presence known and potentially cause streamers discomfort. The most potentially uh, impactful change, though, 
is one that Twitch did not publicly announce. Announced, uh, according to Devin Nash, CMO of streaming company NerdFusion, additional accounts created by banned users are now immediately shadow banned based on their IP. This means that they can still comment, but nobody will see what they're saying. For years now, determined ban evaders have repeatedly gone through the painless process of creating a new Twitch account every time they've gotten banned. This has, in some cases, effectively allowed them to stalk streamers they dislike. Uh, this new Twitch functionality could close that loophole well for people with static IP addresses anyway. Twitch has also made moderation more convenient. Yesterday, they, uh, the company introduced ModView, a customizable page that allows moderators to suspend users ban them and perform other actions more easily. Previously, moderators had to type chat commands in order to perform the lion's share of actions. In addition, ModView lets moderators search users in chat and see their histories, which includes messages they've sent, how many times they've been timed out, etc. There's also a queue for questionable messages flagged by Twitch's Automod tool, which human moderators can then approve or deny. Hopefully, these changes will lead to safer, more pleasant Twitch chats. Failing that, fingers crossed that this at least does away with Twitch's most commonly abused ban evasion and stalking tactic. Frankly, it's about time. Uh, yeah, we, boy. we were on air yesterday. Um, I don't know if it was just before or just after the scoop. I think it was just after. Um, yes, it was. It was just as, as we went on air. So, so we were on air with a scoop yesterday afternoon. And we were looking for someone to raid, as we do when we finish the show. It's nice to send... Uh, our audience to someone else uh, share the love um, and as we're looking through the list of channels that we interact with or that interact with us uh, that were live uh, Manny who's I believe streaming Football Manager right now actually um, he was live playing eFootball PES 2020 um, and Ice Cream Uploads is a mod on Manny's channel um, so anyway I clicked on Manny's channel and that mod view bing, popped up and I was like oh let's click on that so I clicked on it and literally rather than it being like old almost sort of html coding to ban someone from a channel uh, like uh, or get access to your mod tools it's literally takes you into separate view very much like <laughs> the twitch creator dashboard that we were talking about the other day the creator dashboard for those of you that have never streamed on twitch if when when you're streaming you get access to a second screen uh which allows you to use do you know i was going to show this the other day but i i it, i decided not to and i can't remember why uh, just in case it was showing information. Um, yeah, well, I won't bring it up just in case there is anything on there. I've not actually spent that much time seeing whether there is any uh, confidential information on there. But on, I have the, uh, the, the stream here now. In the middle of the screen, I get a preview of the stream, and then I get the activity feed so I can see who's followed, who's subscribed, and so on. Below mm -hmm. that is the chat, and then down the other side is uh, a bunch of quick actions so we can edit the stream info, we can create clips, we can run ad breaks, raids, whatever. Um it's really easy to do from the press of a button as opposed to having to type forward slash raid space uh, ice cream uploads or whatever. We, we, we could just do it there. By, it takes most of the leg, leg work and puts it into modern button pressing stuff that most people are used to. But however, that was there for the content creators themselves. Mods until yesterday had to do all of uh, that kind of thing manually still. But anyway, there's a similar sort of thing now available for mods uh, as, as it's just mentioned in the article there. You can... You can an auto mod is let's say if you have auto mod turned on and um i'm playing pez uh and baby chites uh, baby types fuck yeah that was an amazing goal it's, it's that it's technically uh it, it like f f inflammatory because it uses the word fuck even though it's a supportive message anyway what that happens what happens there is that gets flagged up by auto mod saying do you want this in your chat and you can go yes or no that's it but it popped up within the chat itself um and if it went off the screen you you, you don't get anything to notify that there was an automod message it just disappears into the ether and it's gone lost in the uh, history of twitch chat anyway that now appears in a separate box there saying these are all the, the latest automod things so you can scroll up and down and go yes no yes 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 no 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 yes no yes no whatever um which is cool um but being able to easily just click on names of people that are doing things as well and see their history and see how that stands out is it's all it's all cool yeah i mean uh, there's there's a couple of times where we've been in our own chat and some people have come in with just shouting shit basically and i just you can just click on their name see how many messages they've sent what they've said previously if it turns out they are a massive tosser and they've not been banned before guess who's getting banned in the next 20 seconds in fact it's even quicker than that now because there's a nice little sliding scrolly thing 
but you can choose how long you want to time out for. So, a lot of functionality from Twitch's side of of things is just helping our lives and our mods' lives that we trust to be in here and help us out when we need to. It just made their job a lot easier. Yeah, I think it's 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 nice to see uh, because Twitch started out a million years ago, back in the days of Justin TV, and then onto Twitch. Um, it was all it. It still, to this point now, has that small-minded community scale, but it's obviously huge. Uh, so mm. the fact that you, you type in Craigasm and Poggers and, and things like that, and you're looking at the face of people that that most people don't even know who those faces are. I mean, there's a lot of them that I, I have. I know who they are because I've looked and, and since forgotten, but... Most people won't even realise that those faces are actually people that worked on on Twitch or worked for Justin TV, uh, and it's that small community mindset that was kind of that went into the way the whole website worked. You can tell it was built by a team that was either small or was built a million years ago, so it hasn't yeah. kind of evolved, which is why a lot of the functions are the way they are. It's got that sort of old school vibe to it, especially when it comes to not using it as a user. As a user, it's not too hard to type in. So let's, if I, if I go to the chat now and I type I-C-E-U-P, I-C-U-P, <laughs> uh, Ice Up, uh, I can't remember, let's, Ice Up Love, I think that's what it is. There you go. Oh, it's not even that, is it? Ice Up Heart, we changed it. Um, but yeah, Ice Up, is it Heart? But it's not even Heart now, is it? There we go, Ice Up no. Heart with a H, capital H. Um, so that is quite a complex way of saying emoji. Uh, wow, that's an absolute big moment. EGL. We, we've made it, boys. That's we have it. made it. That's it. EGL have just followed. That's it. Okay. Uh, let's end the stream now. Thanks for tuning in. There's German game over. We've completed Twitch. There we go. The next big question is who is it that's on the other side of this account? Yeah, that's interesting. Do, do we reckon Ton? I reckon it's Alex. I'm gonna say ton. Do we reckon Alex is in mm. that? Uh, Tons a shout actually. Ton does uh, the uh, is it Spitfire? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Spitfire. Yeah. So do you know what I'm, I, okay. hey, it's just followed us and you're getting it wrong. Come on, mate. Sharpen up. Why is it not Spitfire? <laughs> yeah, it is. You, you wasn't sure. You have got to be confident. No, I was. I, I, you just, you just, you're the one that's added that. You're supposed to go. Yeah, you, you nailed it. You got it right. As if you just dragged me down. What kind of wingman are you? Honestly. <laughs> Honestly. Well, the person who didn't want to be Triple H this morning, do you know what I mean? I don't want to be Triple H, not when there's hard. Why do you not want to be Triple H? Because Shawn Michaels is the single greatest wrestler of all time. Why <laughs> yeah, would... no, but Triple H is a, he's not a very good second. He's definitely on par. No, he's, 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 he's not even second. Jeff Hardy will follow. <laughs> and then Triple H is, is down the list. I can't believe you're ranking Jeff Hardy higher than Triple H. All day. All day. I have heard some shit in my time, all and that is day. definitely up there all day. as top tier shit. Just because Triple H got the favoured script writing, Jeff Hardy is the better of the entertainers. Yeah, Triple H has got 17 titles or whatever, Ill like pointless number. That's, it's not like winning a Champions League title. That's something you earn. Uh, as it's, that's that gets lost in the sports entertainment side of me. The number of titles, it's just the number of storylines that have gone in your favour. Jeff Hardy is, is by far... Uh, a better, higher risk uh, re entertainer for me. So yeah, definitely, definitely ahead of him. Mick Foley, I've, I've been... miles ahead of him as well. So oh yeah, mate, well ahead of Triple H, I don't think so. Yeah, but Mick yeah. Foley is definitely up there. Yeah, definitely, Mick definitely, definitely ahead definitely of Triple H. Triple H is just yeah, yeah do you know what? It started out as Hunter Hearst Helmsley, but m m these kids, these streets don't even know what Triple H stands for. Yeah. So, <laughs> so as Dad used to call him, the shitting wrestler. Uh, uh, no, it was just shit, just shit wrestler. Um, I yeah. can't believe what I'm hearing. I cannot believe what I'm hearing. I mean, also by the way, I've I, I didn't realize this until last night. No, this morning actually. Obviously, WrestleMania is on over two days this weekend. Do you know what time it starts? No. This will blow your mind. Midnight UK time. Really? Yeah, because it's over two days. They're starting it at midnight UK time. That's, that's uh, for, for as long as I can remember. It's like that two a.m. First time that's ever. Yeah. But that's just a pre-show. Like the main thing, it doesn't usually start until like three, four o'clock. But it starts at ten a.m. Uh, sorry, it's uh, midnight on Saturday. What are you doing on Saturday, babe? Well, I've got a hell of a day. I've got a hell of a day. So uh, I've got. I'm gonna have a Skype call with me, me nan and my mum. That's about that. That's the, that's the start of five at five p.m. Then it gets bongos, bingos at eight p.m. until whatever time. Then from t half past ten. 
till about midnight is pro clubs and then mate then there's going to be a discord opening up right for wrestlemania for people to come and uh, have a chat while it's on how does that sound mate god damn right God damn right. How does that sound? Yeah. And by the way, I'm just going to throw this out there as well. If you haven't activated it yet, you do have third. I'm not getting any money for this. I'm just telling you the best way of being able to watch WrestleMania if you're interested. WWE Network, 30 days for free to new customers. You don't even, There's no card payment or anything that you need to put in. Just sign up with your email address. you got 30 days free and you can watch WrestleMania for free, my good man. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, you don't even have to find the dodgy stream. Not that I would ever advocate uh, be an advocate of that, but <laughs> <laughs> it's available for free on the WWE Network. C- can you choose to watch it from the Spanish announce table? <laughs> Which inevitably will be getting crashed <laughs> into. Uh, all right, baby Shawn Michaels and Graham Posh or Triple H, get out of here, bitch. There you go. Told you. Told you, mate. Uh, although baby Shawn Michaels, I mean, surely it's the heart, baby kid. That's what you want to go for. This is where you get paid the million pound that you uh, get annually, obviously. <laughs> Oh, that, that's, what, that's what we tell the tax Back man. The that's like what that. we tell the tax man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Heart bib kid. That's it. Heart bib kid. Sean. Man. Actually, uh, do you know if 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 we're gonna go with the the DX bit, then oh no, uh, here we go. Then then Beans surely has to be like. Do you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put him at the lower end of the, the of DX then, just because he keeps calling me Triple H. He's either Jason Sensation level of low. Turns up for one day, gets battered by an iron art and takes off. Or he is D'Lo Brown. That's it. Mate, D'Lo Brown has one of the most, you know, it, his entrance music is iconic and I love it. It's it's a, it's a myth that he was not a good wrestler or <laughs> whatever it was. It's, it's underrated when it comes down to theme musics. It's incredible stuff. I like the, I keep seeing is a, there's a, a meme that goes about him like like when you walk out the toilets uh at the pub and you've absolutely not been doing coke or something like that and it's yeah, he's in, he's got the head bubble. and he's like keeps flicking his nose kind of thing like that as well it's just, <laughs> that was his swagger though wasn't it he, he, he had like a pirouetting head as he walked down and then he'd do the you got Belo brown that's what that's what you're gonna be called beans Belo brown no do you know do you know looking what? at the real deal it's, now it's not it's yes. not Belo brown i'm gonna keep the low bit but just to add insult to injury, because he's called beans, will it be low, low salt beans? That's it. D, <laughs> D low salt beans. <laughs> I can't believe though we got caught out listening to uh, WWE theme tunes big, this big morning. Like, I just... <laughs> no, I'm sexy. Like, it's I've WrestleMania week, of course. Of course I'm going to be sat there at my desk wow. and giving it all a... No one, no one, no one, no one in this Twitch chat believes that you only listen to that song today because it's wrestlemania and it's not absolutely on the not mate it's all yeah it's it's true it's every month of the year do you know what i mean it doesn't matter if i need gene up the, the wwe playlist is being put out in fact i'm going to drop it in the chat for anyone who's in there that wants to take it as well i sent it to jamie uh and he was absolutely loving it I, uh, uh, <clears throat> it's when you it's when you you tune into bib to start the uh, the scoop and you can just hear echoing from the background oh you didn't know <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love that. Your bottom censored for ice cream applause <laughs> viewers. Better call somebody. Uh, anyway, yes, uh, massively sidetracked. Cheers for that, beans. <laughs> but Twitch has new mod tools and they are pretty cool. I think the best thing about the mod tools as well is you know I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely not clicking that link and adding that to my Spotify. While I'm sorry. <laughs> there you go. Uh, anyway, uh, so yeah. Um, yeah, the best the best thing by far is the fact that you can literally just get rid of the Muppets. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's the thing. It it's it doesn't affect us in the same level that it will probably affect a shitload of people. Not that it doesn't, not that it can, it doesn't right now. But you could get some nasty, malicious, almost doxing levels of whoppers on the internet. Um <laughs> Get rid of the Muppets. Bye then, says Beans. <laughs> Adios. Uh, but yeah, you can, like, to the to the level of it's, like, nasty and it's malicious and people start hunting for personal information and so on. It, it can happen. It can happen anywhere. N- not just content creators. You could just get weirdos on Facebook like that as well. Um, but, ra- like, say if you've had someone that's gone to that level and you ban them, but you can still see them in uh, chats or see them following you around the internet or whatever, the fact that... Uh, Twitch has gone, okay, do you know what? We're not just going to make it so that you can stop them from writing in chat. We're going to get them so they're out of the conversation altogether. What's the point in banning someone if they can still see all of the conversation? That's like, that's like, 
imagine someone assaults you or attacks you in public and then they're only allowed to not stand in the circle that you're having a conversation with, but they're allowed to stand right next to it and listen to everything that's being said. And that's still weird as fuck. Get away, you weirdo. So getting them out of the chat means that they can't do... I mean, what was the, the phrase they used? Uh, this is this has, in some cases, effectively, effectively allowed them to stalk streamers they dislike. The fact that they can yeah. get rid of all that completely is, uh, well instantly obvious no stalking is good but also just just for, <laughs> from the mental health of streamers if you're on twitch eight hours a day every day not even five a lot of streamers will do seven days a week if you're on twitch each and every single day and you've just got someone that's pecking at you when they're online oh this will be fun to just go and be a, a twat online and if, you, if they're just doing that and there's nothing that's making it difficult for them to do that even if they're not saying anything you, and you're just you can see their presence in a chat list you just think oh, for fuck's sake this weapon's back gathering information looking for ways to, to interact and and whatever just it just helps you to keep the nasty poisonous negative people that want to chip away at your mindset at arm's length mm -hmm. and anything anything that does that is is good for me so yeah GG. Especially, if it, especially if you are a person that wants to try and bring energy to your stream you know what i mean if you are if if you are uh, a person that is an eight out of ten mentality wise as in you you you're on you go in the front you're in the stream and you're speaking to your mates and you ramp it up to the 10, you're on a high, you know, you're, you're being a bit more boisterous than usual and some twat comes in to try and take you down a, peg, down a peg or two because they haven't got the facilities or the mindset or the, the brain capacity to be uh, boisterous or, you know, entertaining and they want to be able to try and bring you down a peg or two. It, it, of course, it's happened a few, like, it happened a few times in the past when I first started to stream where people would try, you know, because I, I am... As you probably well know, people are coming in. I'm a very energetic person, and people sometimes people don't like that, and they want to try and take the piss out of you for it. So, you know, it's straight away. That's why I'm a no nonsense. You're getting fucking banned all time, don't me. I don't give a shit anymore. Um, it's kind of water off a duck's back. It doesn't get to me like it used to do when I first started out streaming, but inevitably over time, six years later, you can't, you're still here, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? And what we're doing now, mate, we're hosting the UK's number one video game podcast. And being fucking awesome while we do it. Uh, I feel like that Obviously. every time Ice Cream Uploads joins my streams, uh, they try and promote their own merch and steal my viewers. Kappa! Uh... Well, I mean, yeah, we promoted our stuff, you bought our stuff. <laughs> Suckers! <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, although I did do that the other week. Beans went live. Uh, I can't remember exactly what I said, but I was like, oh, don't watch this, watch us instead. We're live here, Kappa! Uh, <laughs> And then everyone actually did. So do you know what? Was it a joke? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not joking. Go, go sub to Beans TV now. Do it now. If you're watching, if you've got Twitch Prime, click on Beans TV in the chat. Click on that, yeah, and then use your Prime there. Drop it. Do it. There's a reason why he has a first badge next to his name and also a diamond, he's because a, that's what he is. He's a geezer, mate. He's a geezer. Uh, Beans, ladies and gentlemen, was the first ever subscriber, and I believe the longest running subscriber on Ice Cream Uploads uh, that isn't a member of the ice cream upload so there you go and gift giver shall we uh shall we just chuck that in as well he is the number one gift giver he, he absolutely loves to give he does mm -hmm. it's a proper giver anyway <laughs> anyway uh immaturity aside let's move ahead shall we yes yes okay great fine i can't believe we've nearly been live for an hour again uh, we're so easily led astray though are we <laughs> like, we just be in our bonnet and that's it four tracks down the line we just completely got off it's alright it's alright I'll get, I'll get a bee in your bonnet because we've had a bee in the bonnet about this next thing quite a few times uh, so let's let's just let's just let's all just get angry and fuck shit up um, apologies for the language but it's gonna it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna continue um, as this article written by Wesley Yin Pool for Eurogamer says that game furloughs staff on full pay until end of April, but it cannot guarantee jobs afterwards. So game has put staff across its business on furlough with full pay until the end of April. Excuse me. <clears throat> on the 24th of March, game was forced to close all of its 247 stores after the government shuts all shops selling non-essential goods. In an email sent last night, 31st of March, excuse me again, and seen by Eurogamer Fraser's group, aka Mike Ashley's retail business, uh, so Fraser's group notified furloughed staff it will pay them their regular pay from the 26th of March up to the 30th of April, but it cannot guarantee full pay or jobs after the end of April. 
this regular pay Eurogamer understands is worked out based on average monthly income rather than contracted hours, which will come as some relief to the many game staff on low hours contracts but work full time hours. Um, we are working in unprecedented times, reads the letter. Every day our lives and economy, uh, economy see huge changes. COVID-19 touches every aspect of what we do. All of us are affected as individuals, businesses and society at large. Our economy is fighting for survival. Retail remains one of its hardest hit sectors and we will continue to do all that we can to ensure that our business remains as strong as possible for the benefit of all of us. <clears throat> Uh, we must make difficult decisions to ensure that we that as we move out of the current situation, our business is in the best place possible. That work uh, was once there. The work that was once there has fallen away. Our business, as with so many others, is smaller. We must respond to these circumstances, including the reduction in work. As you know, in light of the government's latest guidance and most recent uh, stricter curbs on permitted activity, we had no choice but to close all of our stores with immediate effect as... Uh, as at close of trading, 23rd of March, 2020. Because our stores are closed and because your work relates to the trading of our stores, since this day or shortly after, you've been unable to have uh, and have not been working. And this uh, is because there has been no work for you. Across the business, there are many humbling uh, stories of what our people have done to support us, their colleagues and their communities, national and local, uh, local for which, thank you. Uh, wow, this is a long ass article. Uh, one source at Game said, head office staff, who were furloughed, finished yesterday. Games Warehouse in Basingstoke continues to operate and massive video game releases such as Resident Evil 3 Remake and Final Fantasy 7 Remake uh, amid those releases, should I say. As far as staff are concerned, they will be paid as normal via payroll and PAYE up until the end of April. Staff uh, were told that after the end of April, assuming their jobs still exist, they will get 80% of their wage up to a cap of £2,500 per month as part of Fraser's Group use of the government's recently announced co coronavirus job retention scheme. However, the letter goes on to issue a start warning to staff. We and you should plan for the next few months getting harder for our business. Fraser's Group said it is possible it will ask employees to reduce their salaries or alternatively make redundancies. We cannot rule out the possibility of taking such drastic steps. We are in difficult circumstances. Game staff we spoke to who asked to remain, uh, remain anonymous to protect their careers reacted positively to the letter. It actually gives a lot of people some financial stability for the next month and is a big comfort to many, said one source. I can't speak for everyone, of course, but I think it's some good news during these uncertain times. Hopefully by the time they have, uh, have to reassess next month, the world will be on its way to getting back to normal. It is what it is, I suppose, another furloughed game staff member said. Full pay till the end of April is fair. I've had to apply for universal credit. I'm just going to look for a new job altogether. The news is, uh, be is being reported in the mainstream press as an attempt by Mike Ashley to repair his retail empire's reputation as his executive team see their annual salaries cut to only 40000 <laughs> Oh, did uh, This week, Ashley, who also owns Sports Direct, issued a public apology over his attempt to keep shops open in defiance of official advice. The damage has already been done. Uh, it is one of the biggest bellends in the world when it comes to business. Uh, no, the long and short of it, uh, unfortunately, he is not a very nice person. We've seen it with the way that he treats uh, Newcastle United. Uh, the way that he ended up taking over Debenhams, it, it, no House of Fraser, sorry, won it. Uh, it took over and also sport, uh, Sports Direct and now Game. Um, so trying to keep his staff on the front line to continue making money, regardless of what it is that um, the government will be helping to pay the wages of their staff. It's, it's a ridiculous thing. Um, and clearly he always put money in front of absolutely everything. And he started, he started to get his comeuppance over the last couple of months with really bad news press, not just about the football side of things, but from the retail side of things, he's getting in the neck now as well. The damage has already been done, mate. Uh, unlucky, because it, it, for the time being, it looks like these uh, these staff members are getting what they deserve, which is uh, safety in their own homes. And they're also getting enough money to potentially be able to cover their rent for the next two or three months, however long it, we are going to be in furlough for. Um, so yeah, it's it's a good win for the people who are going to be there, providing that they can get back into their job once all this is blown over. Who knows? So um, it it was a stupid thing to keep it open anyway, because the people who are taking it seriously, which I think is quite a lot of people as the weeks have started to go on, know full well that you can't just go down to the shop to be able to buy a game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's <clears throat> that's the thing. I mean, it's I think it was the audacity, and this and this obviously. 
will probably sound a little bit rich coming from two people sat live on the internet asking people to tune in, sit in the chat and get involved and talk about video games. But video games are not essential retail. Video games are a huge part of life for many, many people. Um, video games help support my family. That's that's a fact. Um, but it's not the only way that I support my family. If video games weren't there, I would find other ways to support my family. Therefore, it's not essential in that sort of sense. But going out and buying a video game from a brick and mortar store is not essential retail. And, and, and it's the fact that when everyone was struggling to get their heads around the situation, uh, <laughs> when everyone, uh, yeah, me too. Uh, when everyone was trying to get their heads around the situation uh, at first, and we're still not even there now, everyone's trying to assess what you can do, how far you can go. And the only advice we had in the early days is wash your hands, don't go anywhere unless you absolutely need to. Um, and and gamer going, oh, we absolutely need to keep our stores open. We absolutely need to have our staff mm. coming in. And we absolutely need customers to pile into the stores to join into queues and so on to buy these games because it's essential retail. People at home need books. Uh, need books. Oh, that's Waterstones in mind. Need games. They need to, that's that distraction to help with social distancing. So we are essential retail. It's not. It's not at all. People have other games. People have books. People have board games. People can buy games digitally directly from stores on every format that they play on. So it's not essential. And I think it's that level of greed when it was hiding the the greed and the desire to earn for the business, which that could have come from a, from a, a legitimate place. That could be a case of reading this now. It can't guarantee jobs after April. Are they worried that they don't have enough money to keep the businesses open? And they were worried that if they close and they didn't have enough information on the furlough scheme, that that people might not have jobs afterwards. If that's what they were worried about, Fair enough, but don't hide that behind the lie of, oh yeah, we are essential retail. Because you just, even if you were doing it for noble reasons, it's the lie and the backhand sort of stuff that goes with it. The the, the backhand of cash things that, that it sounds like, yeah, 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 we'll just keep operating and we'll endanger the people on the front lines while we close all, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And we all take massive, blah, blah, blah. blah and it just sounds shit. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, GG for furloughing staff. It would have been a decision uh, that is probably easier now. More information is coming out how the furlough scheme is working. It's possibly part of the reason why it's been announced so late. Uh, but, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, furloughing staff will guarantee that they have the money to put food on the table, which is why the people that are in, in the shit with it, uh, the people that work at game, they obviously ha they want to keep their job, so they're not saying anything about it on record. But the fact that you're getting seen... Um, the fact that it gives some people financial stability for the next month is a big comfort to many. Um, mm -hmm. And hopefully they have the time to reassess uh, the business next month when the world is on its way to getting back to normal. You can see they appreciate the fact that they've been look, looked after both financially and they have a level of stability. Um, but why did it take so long? That yeah. Like you said, they're hiding behind, oh, we've been doing this from, well, it's, it's, what, I think they've been open and honest and say we haven't been doing it from the start. We just wanted to look after ourselves and make as much money as we could until we absolutely had to is pretty much the reason why they've now had to do it as of last week. Um, it's interesting that we have actually got a look into what it is that's been supplied around the staff members and the staff members have reached uh, spoke out about it. Some of them actually in favour of this to know full well that they are going to be looked after until April um or maybe even beyond but they will be looking for future employment maybe because they're pissed off that it took so long and their lives have been put at risk and their family's lives have been put at risk um before they actually had to close the doors for the foreseeable it's a, a massively shit situation for them because if they'd have said uh i'm not coming in they would have lost the jobs instantly and wouldn't have had furlough they wouldn't have had any money they would have just lost the jobs so they uh i mean this is going to be a controversial opinion um, this is exactly what you get from me pretty much every single day. But usually the people who are working in game are young people. They would have just people who just left uh, college or university and they was looking for a job in the meantime until they find something better. Uh, so it tends to be the younger people in retail that get affected the most rather than people who are a little bit older, like my age. I'm, I'm 30 this year or Graham, who's uh, 31 next year. 
Um, so yeah, I'll take it's... that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I, I didn't want to hazard a guess as to actually how old you are, just ah. in case it was way off the mark. I'm going to say 33. Uh, I'll take that as well. I'm 34. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, it's obvi- It is usually younger people in retail that end up getting stiff the most uh, because they have. Fuck you. They don't, they don't have a. <laughs> they don't have. A, they don't have a, a lot. It's this is fucking. I will say they don't have as much to lose as someone probably who would be, and this is for the younger audience. Uh, sorry, for the younger people who work in retail than people who potentially have mortgages who may be ten years older than them. Um, so the likelihood that they will be able to slip into another job is probably a little bit easier than the people who are a little bit older than them. Um, so I understand from the people who are older that wanted to sit this out until they officially couldn't be able to work any longer to get their furlough. But like you said in the article, people are just going to take the furlough and then look for another job because they realise how much of a bell end the person who owns a company is. And not only that, the fact that he's um, said that they cannot guarantee full jobs after the end of April. I mean, that is... uh, Beans, thank you very much for the host, even though you said I look like I'm 45 next year, fuck you. Uh, But yeah, (laughs) lovely Beans, lovely Beans. Uh, Good afternoon, Wisp as well, by the way. Uh, Hi, hi, welcome back. Um, Yeah, the fact that they've mentioned that they can't guarantee jobs past April um i think is i mean part of me wants to say that is him saying do you know what you might want to take steps to protect your family we've done all we can and we we know that you're covered until the end of uh, end of april but after that going into may we might not be able to trade at that point in time so you Mm -hmm. might need to find something else so go looking for jobs um is it him doing that say go look after yourselves make sure you're okay or is that him doing that for the same reason that rockstar announced that they gave five percent of their profits away is that to see the uh oh look they're doing the charitable thing or is it just to get mm. get the sympathy vote oh now we understand why they were being dicks because they're close to going out of business um because you can't imagine that's got to be a a very um confidence giving comment if you said yeah. said to your customers, yeah, we probably haven't got long left. Who's gonna gonna? Who's instantly thinking? Do you know what? I'm gonna buy my PS4, PS5 even from game when it all blows over. Because I mean, do you want to buy your console, your hardware from a company that might not be there to support you on your your mm-hmm. warranty and your guarantee if something goes wrong with it when you have to take it back? Uh, so well, there's a lot of things that go around social media at the moment where I've seen people are literally, are literally making lists of places that they will not support when all this blows over. And the amount of lists that I've seen with the likes of Game Sports Direct, uh, JD Sports, Witherspoons, all of these places that have just treat, treated their staff like absolute shit during this time. Hopefully, I mean, this is horrible for people who do have jobs there, but... Um, hopefully they won't be seen as much business as they should do and the people who have had to work through this in those instances will move on to bigger and better things where companies actually want to be able to look after their uh, look after their employees and do the best for them because they deserve so much better especially people who are working in retail that still have to go in every single day and technically put their lives on the line at this point um to be able to fulfill the the services for the british public it's just that's just, that's a long and short of it at this moment in time every single time you step outside the door you run the risk of giving the virus to your family members or yourself which we, we've seen it take lives of famous people celebrities old people and just normal young healthy people including children i think there was a 13 year old yesterday that ended up dying of this virus so it affects absolutely everybody so people who are putting profit over the uh, the the lives of their customers and also their staff hopefully these companies uh, will have a change of heart with the way that they either proceed in the future, change their mentality, or go again, awful to say, go under completely because there's no need for these companies to be able to trade, especially places like Spoons, who make so much money hand over fist to be able to close their close their doors for one month and pay their staff. It's nothing to these people, yeah, absolutely that... nothing. It's pocket change. And if it if it isn't making money hand over fist then then it has to be it has to be a poor poor business model they are hemorrhaging money somewhere because Mm -hmm. the amount of money that you spend as one person a group of people on a night out in a weatherspoons uh with a bajillion people around you all doing the same thing you they are taking money hand over fist um and if they still 
like I, mean, I don't know the books i don't know the books but but if you are running a business that is that is churning uh, sale after sale after sale after sale after sale like that and still not having the money to keep uh, well to first of all pay decent wages because that was the part of the complaint about weatherspoons as well is they aren't paying enough the the, the, the staff work stupidly late and then come in stupidly early again like eight hours later after finishing so it's eight hours between finish and start that doesn't include the time it takes to get home get some food get to sleep get up get washed get showered get dressed and then get back you've got eight hours a person needs eight hours sleep never mind just eight hours yeah. between shifts um so they're doing this day in day out for months and months and months and years and years and years and then just get told oh sorry can't pay you jog on get a job at tesco's was his mm-hmm. actual statement he said uh, yeah. So yeah, he's we, we, the thing about um, well, I can't remember the name of the dude who owns Weatherspoons. Whatever it was, we'll just call him. Is it called Tim something? Yeah, t- I want to say Tim Martin, but it might not be. Um, uh, him, Mister Weatherspoons. If he's running a business that has so much money and so many people breaking their backs to support it, and and he can't spot them at the first opportunity then he's either mm-hmm. taking money and squirreling it away to look after himself extremely handsomely or he's just running his business business badly but he gets highlighted as like yeah um example of a british businessman this is the kind of person you should look up to and it's like should we really if he's not got enough money to support his business is he that great at his uh, at running a business himself anyway yeah. i'm not saying it's an easy thing to do i don't run a, run a business like that especially not one that big um but He's not, he's not a prime example. If he doesn't have contingencies for it, uh, I mean, not that this is something you could create a perfect contingency for, but if he doesn't have any form of contingency, it was a case of we have to stop, we can't pay anyone. You don't have you don't have a month in the bag already? What the hell? What? 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 Yeah, so, yeah. Exactly. So it's, 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 a, it's an interesting discussion to have. Um, and it'll be again interesting to see how long these companies that I don't think there's a lot of companies that are still uh, I don't think there's a lot of retail companies that are still open that aren't essential. I think the rest of them, uh, as of the beginning of this month, i.e., yesterday, probably would have closed their doors um, and expecting the furlough to ease the burden. But it, it's just the, the honesty part of it hiding behind the fact that you think that you're doing good now will not hide the fact that you've been an absolute tosser yeah. the last month or so i mean um, it's, it's not even like it's just bespoke to them either companies that that people that i i thought virgin was a really really respectable company um richard branson i've been told since i was tiny that he's a self-made man he left school with no qualifications um and he's managed to, to make a, a superb business. And he was he was always shown as this guy wearing like a knitted sweater with his long BG flowing golden hair. Uh, um, and then and then like when you, the first time he it, like the cards are down is that the correct? But so let's say that the chips are down. That's it. The first time the chips are down, he's like, oh sorry, I'm gonna have to let you all go without paying any of you. And mm-hmm. it's like it's only after the backlash that they fix that. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Mike mm-hmm. Ashley. Only after the backlash that they fix that. And there was a comment from David. Mike Ashley put the prices up on all indoor sports equipment by 10% the very first day of lockdown because, you know, you're not allowed to go out, but you're allowed to exercise um, and you're allowed to uh, be indoors. He tried to stay open because they were selling exercise equipment, which is essential retail. It's not just like buying uh, games is not essential retail in that sort of sense. It's not. Keeping your stores open just so that you can sell some Lycra spandex is not the same sort of thing, mate. Uh, so, yeah, that Mike Ashley, that Tim Martin or whatever it's called, Richard Branson's Virgin, they've, they've all shown their darker side when it comes to capitalism. So, yeah. Uh, mm. Beans. Aren't Sports Direct still trading online, though? I don't know about you, but I prefer to buy online. Surely games are still trading online as well. So he's I've just spot- gone into the Sports Direct website and they are still trading. It doesn't say anywhere. Yeah. Um, that, any, I mean, anyway. Go on, go on. I was just going to say, it doesn't say anywhere about the, the hours that people are working in the warehouse or if there's any change to their production line. I can't see it on the homepage. In fact, I'll tell you what they have done on the homepage. They've advertised, because you're allowed to go out and exercise, there's a shitload of running stuff on the front of their website. Uh, running trainers, active wear, and things like that. Uh, awesome. so guarding games, fit from home. Well, yeah. um, uh, the comment of the game but they will still be making money from game um however game haven't actively shifted game has two businesses as far as i'm aware digital 
so game digital and game retail i believe are two separate companies um so i mean they're probably all still owned by mike ashley but they operate differently so they can't necessarily earn more money for digital and then offset that against retail because they are separate businesses i believe i could be wrong on that i'm i'm, I'm don't know the differences i don't work in that sort of area but i know that every time i've tried to do something digitally and then work with it in store i've been told in store yeah it's a completely separate business the price that you've got on your app that's in your hand right there that says something's 30 quid yeah it's 15 quid more here but that's because we're a, dig a separate business i've been told it and, and i've been told it in many sort of forms before so the article says one same uh, uh, one source at games said head office staff who were filled yes uh, finished yesterday games warehousing bays in stoke continues to operate amid massive video game releases such as resident evil 3 and final fantasy so yes they are still paying warehouse uh employees to go in to do a lot of stuff which isn't necessarily a bad thing because um uh well let's forget the, co the content first but let's forget the fact it's games um uh, warehouses being run providing they're being run with the necessary like sanitation uh, um and uh access to sanitizers and masks and gloves and everything like that not overcrowding we do need um products if we can't go into stores then the need for online stuff and therefore warehousing is mm. uh, is increased so the fact that that sort of that sort of stuff exists still makes makes sense to me um but yeah i mean do video game warehouses need to exist i mean that depends on your stance and that's probably too big of a rabbit hole for us to go down i mean yeah 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 it's up to you you can make up your own decision whether you think games should still be operating its warehouses but warehouses definitely still need to be around because without warehouses without that means absolutely no profit which means businesses go bust which means that people lose staff and then there's a longer term economic blah blah blah, blah. but whatever anyway um uh, long story short game has done the right thing eventually they have furloughed their staff they aren't dropping people they aren't asking them to work or, or not willing to pay them they have ceased trading uh, or cease, cease using those people in those roles because they can't trade uh, and people are getting paid a decent wage so whether they meant it whether it was a plan all or not i mean you can be cynical as much as you need to um but um yeah that is that is what it is uh anyway let's move on something that might be good news for game later on in the year though is the fact that uh, we have nothing Just before you read into this oh, because oh, oh, oh. I really need a piss and I've been holding it for as long as I can, so I'll be back in but two seconds. Actually, but just before you disappear, babe, I just want to take some time to talk at length to keep you held there. Ah, he's gone. <laughs> you <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> so this article written by Sharif Saeed of VG247 says, We have nothing that says we're not going to make the dates that we've been planning. And that is said by Phil Spencer on the Xbox Series X launch. So good news game. You may have something to say later in, in the year as head of Xbox Phil Spencer has weighed in on the possibility of coronavirus causing delays for games and hardware. In a lengthy interview with the IGN, Xbox boss Phil Spencer discussed a wide range of topics, including how the gaming side is handling the coronavirus pandemic across its departments. To begin with, Spencer was clear that the safety of his various teams is the most paramount right... Uh, post I can't even speak the most paramount right now. There is no decision that I will make, or frankly, anybody at Microsoft would even ask me to make, that would compromise the safety and security of the teams for a near-term financial product, uh, financial or product gain, said Spencer. For Xbox Series X, as far as manufacturing capacity in China, the executive said that the supply chain is starting to come back. We can see in the factories and stuff we're starting to get things back from uh, that... Is, and, uh, Okay, I'm going to try this one again. We can see in the factories and stuff we're starting to get things back from them, and that's working for us, he revealed. Ah, we can see that in the factories and the stuff we're starting to get back from them. I get you now, got there eventually. Anyway, carrying on. We have nothing right now that says we're not going to make the dates and that we've been, uh, the, make the dates that we've been planning. But I'll also say that's kind of real time stuff, and I'm going to put the safety and security of the teams at the top along with the quality product. Although Microsoft has obviously not announced any delays for Xbox Series X or Halo Infinite. Spencer said that developing from home is not an easy process and feels that teams are stretched, which is something we actually touched on earlier on. Um, so back to a comment from Spencer again. Uh, building a video game from home, a large distributed team of hundreds of people is not easy. Video games, as we know right now, are big and there are huge, massive asset bases 
uh, that each one of these games have. Spencer explained, things right now aren't easy, and I think things are stretched. I can feel it in the teams. They're stretched. Uh, when pressed whether Microsoft has a plan B for the Xbox Series X launch, assuming things don't go back to normal as quickly as you'd hope, Spencer said he didn't want to ask what if questions at this stage. He did confirm, however, that Microsoft is not interested in staggered launches across the different regions, a lesson learned from the launch of Xbox One. When it comes to software, considering how much fuss Microsoft made about Halo Infinite being a launch game, uh, Spencer was clear that Xbox Series X launch won't be held up because of any individual game. Xbox Series X and Halo Infinite are slated for release this holiday. Bibby gets back just in time to block out the bras. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> what a great time. Did, did you hear what I said then? <laughs> uh, he made it back just in time to block out the bras. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> uh, so, long story short, Bib, just in case you didn't catch that and uh, you haven't read this article, Microsoft believe that they have enough in production their, yep. their feedback from China, uh, their manufacturing operations in China is that things are starting to come back. The things that they're sending over and the words that they're getting from uh, from China is that everything seems to be okay. And at this point in ta time, right now, they don't see any point uh, investigating what the, uh, he, uh, Phil Spencer referred to as what if strategies, i.e. plan Bs, if it's not happening. So, yep. uh, My thoughts are uh, unchanged Unchained, unchained melody, uh, unchanged from the last two weeks. Uh, I believe that the, <laughs> I believe that this console will still be delayed slightly, even if it is uh, by a week or two. Uh, I can't, I can't see it. I can't see it still hitting the dates for, uh, for. In fact, thinking about it, yeah, I'm fairly certain. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm caught in two minds. I, I don't think it's going to be available on um, on the release date. I know they haven't put a date, uh, but I think the original leak date was November 25th, if I remember rightly. It was uh, um, November 24th, uh, which is um, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. There we go. Yeah, so do I think it's going to hit that date? No, but if it does, I don't think there'll be enough for the whole consumer base to be able to have at least a chance of being able to get them. <laughs> it's Thursday, November 26th. Probably... There we go. Not 24th. I went the wrong way. I knew it was one day <laughs> off. Both but... wrong. <laughs> um, I, be I believe that... I don't think it's going to be available on the date that they set, but they've been very sh shrewd with the date that they have given them. There's only been one leaked date, so they're just going to give a ballpark area of when they think that this is going to drop. If it doesn't drop around the time that they, if they had given a date of release, if it didn't hit that date, they would have been able to say, oh, it's the coronavirus, it's pushed us back. But because they haven't given a date yet, I, I think that's probably a, a good move from their side. If it does get released around that time, I do not, I think probably three in 10 people will be able to pick one up. And that's not due to people being able to not afford it. I do think it will be because there isn't that many in the wild. Yeah, I think, I think that's probably my prediction is that it will still release holiday 2020 mm. they don't have a set date uh so they don't have to commit to doing the 26th of november or whatever it could fall to yeah. mid-december which is probably a bit late for what they'd ideally want with the christmas release window um but you know never you never know people um having liquid working situations at this point in time whether they're going to be in jobs if uh, after uh their furloughing happened or not as we just heard with uh, the game article um launching later on could benefit them that might be the only opportunity that people have actually gone okay i've got enough now to buy it whatever um <clears throat> but the fact that they haven't announced the date i believe they will still launch this year mm -hmm. will they launch with enough is my question and that's the one that i've kind of said before and i, I think i'm going to stick with that one is it, they will launch and they will probably say they've launched with enough but will they say that afterwards? In hindsight, once all the dust settled and everyone's already bought it and there's nothing they can do about it, they might go, actually, do you know what? We would have liked to have launched with more, but coronavirus got in the way. Yeah. Um, but for now, they'll go, yeah, yeah, of course there's plenty. Yeah, of course there's plenty. <laughs> um, and then people will buy it. There won't be enough on the shelves. We'll get price gouging from people buying too many and so on. I think, that, I think that's, from my perspective, almost inevitable. Unless they come out with concrete numbers saying we have this amount of consoles they will go on sale on this day until we get that 
that stuff, then I think it's going to be marketing smoke and mirrors. They will have enough. There will be enough consoles to supply the demand and whatever. But how do we know that until we actually come to buy it in the store and there's none left? Yeah. So. I think probably ordering on the likes of Amazon um, or other online retailers will probably be your best bet in trying to get hold of one of these rather than uh, the traditional going down to the shops and picking one up. Um, just because I think Amazon are a lot more flexible with their uh, stock levels, so they'll let you know basically as soon as you either go to pre-order it or before you even get pre time to pre-order it to say, uh, we'll, we're, the due to demand, we don't have as many as we want. Put one in the checkout, see what happens. Um, but I think they're a bit more flexible with what they tend to say uh, they have in stock. Um, plus, you know, there's more chance of them delivering it on release day than yeah. most uh, than most places, yeah. especially if you yeah. are putting all your eggs in a particular basket of being able to go down to your local game shop. Uh, and when I say game shop, I don't mean the brand game or just whatever it is that you get your consoles uh, or your games from uh, to be able to collect it from there. We'll see. Um, I do generally think, though, that this will be... Uh, it will miss the del their uh, release window. By how much, I don't know, but I do think that they will miss the release window, which is, again, I think why PlayStation haven't mentioned when they think that theirs is going to land. They're going to wait for... They're going to wait for as long as they can before they have to release a date. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Pregnant pause. Uh... Uh, okay. Uh, are you okay, mate? Yeah, I'm just. Uh, Mark, uh, afternoon, Enix, anyway. Uh, I also seen somebody else in the chat that I missed when I was on a rant. I am. Um... Who was it? Wisp. There we go. Morning, Wisp. Afternoon, Jesus Christ. God damn it. Yeah, I said hello a little bit earlier on as uh, Wisp dropped in. I was just clicking through uh, because someone. I'll, I'll read you the comment out. This is the scoop I have. Uh, the scoop is I have. At erection, so I've just just deleted that comment because get the fuck out of here. But uh, there you go. Um, I meant uh, I looked at it before and I thought, so I thought I'm not even gonna call it out. But then I was, I was, because I was deleting it, and it took me longer than I expected. I thought I'd shout it out. But anyway, speaking of erections, hi Jordan. Hey, <laughs> what a joke! How you doing, Jordan? You're right. Um, welcome, 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 welcome. Um, hey, wickage, wickage. Um, just woke up. This is is that is that. Corona, like completely cocking up your. Uh... No, mate, he, he's definitely out. He's smashing the Xbox in it. He's hundred percent smashing it. What? What you been playing? What you been playing? Uh, let us know. Let us know. Let us know. Um, I'm jobless, so one hundred percent Final Fantasy Seven. Have you got the full kit? Is it? Oh right, okay. Yeah, he's playing the original. I'm about to say, Jesus, that's a that's a little bit early that you managed to get your hands on that. Well, I've seen uh, you talking about purchasing con the consoles from specific places. I've seen a few people today and this isn't a spawn but shop2.net feel free to uh, drop the spawn i've seen quite a few people getting their shop2.net orders today uh for uh, i've seen people with both resident evil 7 and final fantasy 7 turning up both of them today resident evil 3 uh yeah that one too whatever <laughs> mediocre game uh, so whatever mate <laughs> what a joking what a joking uh i am looking forward to playing resident evil 3 to be fair i'm um fairly far into my uh claire b playthrough on resi 2 uh i've i'll just say gone underground and i'm quite far past that stuff that like i, I was i think i was telling you yeah. yesterday and uh, stuff that took me forever to do on the first playthrough i'm i'm well far past in in like half the amount of time on the second playthrough partially because i know what i'm doing or where i'm going and partially because i've done certain bits before but... bastard what shop two have i've gone with 40 pound for resident evil 3 They've dropped it by they've dropped it by twenty percent. It was forty nine ninety nine. It's now thirty nine eighty five. Oh, like that's that. why all pre orders from the thirty first of the third will be dispatched on Friday the third on Monday. So people who would have originally pre ordered it are getting ten pound off because it looks like they won't make it. Okay, that makes sense. Ish. I wonder uh, are people. That I've pre-ordered previously will get them sent out today, uh, sent out yesterday, or the day before, or whatever. What... Yeah. So the thirty-first was the cut-off to at ten, eleven forty a.m. That was your cut-off. That would have been um, for delivery today or tomorrow. But any orders like I, I.e. from that day onwards, you would have got it Friday. Uh, you would have got it on Monday onwards. 
So for the sake of potentially missing it for two days, you would have saved yourself a tenner. Oh, okay. 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 Uh... <clears throat> well, I would have played on release anyway, so I'll be streaming it tomorrow evening. Goddamn right. So if you are watching, feel free to hit follow on the channel. It's just above me-ish, somewhere over there. Um, hit follow. That will get you notified each and every single time we go live. And we will obviously go live tomorrow afternoon with Friday's episode of The Scoop. But it's a dual stream day, as Bibi will be playing some Resi-ish. Um, I'm going to say dual stream. Today's a dual stream day-ish. It, 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 it will be one longer stream, uh, as we are going to go live with a little bit of Pez, I believe. Uh... Uh, 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 uh. Yes, so we're going to stick on live. So we will wrap up as if we're about to finish the scoop because obviously we turned this into an on-demand video podcast and audio podcast. But feel free to stick around in the channel because we will hit the end slates and stuff as we usually do. But then we will come back and jump into a little bit of Thursday fun times. So, um, yeah, let's wrap things up. Yeah, then obviously quite a few stories a lot of it coronavirus, uh, coronavirus focused, or was it entirely coronavirus focused? It was um, game following staff. Uh, there was, I can't remember what we had. Oh, the Xbox isn't being delayed. Bethesda cancels its E3 showcase. And the only thing that wasn't uh, coronavirus focused was a big nod and a GGWP to the people at Twitch for dropping uh, a new update to the website yesterday that allows mods to have special sexy nice controls to allow those knobheads that rock up in your chat like there we go fiends tv just there let's just <laughs> delete purge and yeah so yeah they basically made it to get uh, easier to get rid of the people that uh, are there being negative so just, geez, 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 geez. but anyway uh let's wrap things up as i say we will be back uh immediately after we finish this stream we're not even gonna go offline um but uh for the likes of people listening on demand we will be back again tomorrow with more scoopalicious content feel free to drop into the channel there if you're on youtube feel free to hit like on the content and sub to the channel do it do it do it anyway before we disappear anything you want to say babe yes as always if you do see anything knocking around the video game hemisphere then do feel free to tag at we've got to be in your at gray underscore day and at ice cream uploads with your thoughts and impressions on the news story we'll add our thoughts and impressions and include them in the very next show which will be tomorrow at 2 p.m you goddamn right okay well we are gonna drop off we will be dropping back in for those of you sticking around on the channel but remember if you're not sticking around we do have an emote that says it but if you don't have used to it just please feel free to stay frosty <laughs>